हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो एक बार प्लीज बता दीजिए वेदर आई एम ऑडिबल और नॉट गुड गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू राज मल्होत्राज आई एस अकेडमी सो जस्ट टेल मी वंस वेदर आई एम ऑडिबल और नॉट सो लेट्स देन वील स्टार्ट द सेशन so am i audible properly audible so as you are saying that sir you are audible properly so let's start today's session so as you all know that uh, our series of current affairs is ongoing right this series is specifically for you who are specifically preparing for cse examination right so uh, today's uh, today today's topic will be the current affairs of last week that is from 7th to 12th of march right so uh, i will be discussing about the economic current affairs of last week that is from 7th to 12th march 2022 so i have picked up three topics right so i have picked up three topics my first topic will be about the indigenous production of defense products okay so we we will be discussing about the indigenous production of defense products then we will move on to looming oil crisis that is all about crude and edible oils we will discuss why uh, in world there is such high prices of crude oil as well as edible oils right then we will move on to fifth ministerial dialogue on trade and investment between india and canada plus we will also have to see what all impact it will have on india import and export right so we will be discussing each and every topic in detail and i will be covering all the aspects which is important for your uh, prelims as well as mains examination right so let's start the first topic so the first topic is all about the indigenous production of defense products right so recently it was in news because of 18 major platforms has been identified by the government of india to <coughs> design and develop defense parts or defense goods within india okay so what government is planning that they should they should be self reliant in case of defense products or de defense goods right so they have they have make a, a they have made a ma many platforms regarding this particular production so uh, it if, if i talk about the defense acquisition procedure which is currently is of 2020 we will be discussing about the current defense acquisition procedure that how government acquires the defense products currently and what is the aim of government and how they are going to be a self reliant in defense production right so the first category that how they are going to make it self reliant or how they are going to make it indigenous these all products should be made indigenous so how they are going to do, uh, do it the first thing we are going to discuss about under the defense acquisition procedure of 2020 that is make category aims to achieve self reliance self reliance by, by self reliance what we mean that in place of importing in place of importing the defense goods we should produce it in india right we should produce it in india so as we have already discussed in our previous lectures that india is highly reliant on russia on their defense products right okay so now india is planning that we should stop relying on other countries and we should produce these products in india only right so there are different measures which which are taken by the government of india we are talking about that one by one right chalo so jo currently aapka defense acquisition procedure hai uske bare mein hum discuss karte hain that we will be discussing uh, in next slides so basically the first aim is all about to be self reliant in defense acquisition right and it involves designing and development of equipment which are related to defense in india only right chalo then 
वट इज आर करेंट डिफेंस प्रोक्योरमेंट प्रोसीजर वट इज आर करेंट डिफेंस प्रोक्योरमेंट प्रोसीजर तो बेसिकली द फर्स्ट डीपीपी दैट इज डिफेंस प्रोक्योरमेंट प्रोसीजर वॉज फर्स्ट प्रोमुलेटेड इन द इयर टू थाउजेंड टू एंड द सेम हैज बीन रिवाइज पीरियडिकली अकॉर्डिंग टू द इकोनॉमिक नीड्स और अकॉर्डिंग टू द डिफेंस नीड्स ऑफ आर कंट्री राइट सो द ग्रोइंग डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्री ओके सो इट हैज सिंस बीन रिवाइज पीरियडिकली बिकॉज ऑफ द ग्रोइंग डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्रीज एंड to achieve enhanced self reliance in the defense manufacturing right so why this particular defense procurement procedure that is the way to procure the defense products has produced has been changing immensely because of just two things that is because domestic industry of india is increasing also the government of india wants to achieve the self reliance so that the dependence on other countries on these de defense products can be लोअर डाउन राइट सो इसको कम से कम किया जाए जो हमारी डिपेंडेंस है टूवर्ड्स दीज डिफेंस प्रोडक्ट शुड बी लोअर डाउन राइट देन द आर्म फोर्स एक्वायर्स कैपिटल एसेट अकॉर्डिंग टू द डिफेंस एक्विजिशन प्रोसीजर इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो कैपिटल एसेट वॉट आर दीज कैपिटल एसेट्स इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द कैपिटल एसेट्स इन केस ऑफ डिफेंस कैन यू नेम सम कैपिटल एसेट्स इन डिफेंस can you name some capital assets in defense ah uh, that we will discussing in our later slide don't worry about it that how government is going to achieve that but just tell me that what is capital asset in defense sector what is capital asset in defense sector okay very good airplanes okay tanks arms ammunition right so these all things are assets and for now the india is reliant on these products for other countries right so basically india is not fully self reliant for these products india is a importer of these defense products right yes so <clears throat> along with buying equipment from indian international players dap 2020 had also introduced a chapter on leasing on equipment so basically so basically it is talking about three things dap is talking about three things first we have to import some products obviously india cannot be self reliant in one night second thing we we should focus on self reliance and third it is also focusing on the leasing what is leasing rather than purchasing the defense products we can hire the products say for example if india wants to import some aeroplane from russia it is worth around 100 crore say suppose i am taking in just an hypothetical example if india wants to import a particular airplane from russia and the cost of that airplane is 100 crore in place of buying that particular airplane india should or have the option to hire it so that the outlay the outlay of funds can be lowered down right ki jo funds hain aapke jo bahar ja rahe hain funds due to this purchase of 100 crore agar aap usko hire kar lete ho to aapke funds kam bahar jayenge jaise aap seedhi si baat hai say suppose if you you have two option either you can buy a home or you can rent it out right you can buy it on rent yahan par aapka capital outlay that will go immensely however if you are if you are living on rent the capital outlay or the amount which you are going to suffer will be less right so dab program is basically doing this okay then how the financial support will be provided so basically the financial support will be provided by the ministry of defense that is 70% of the cost of these prototypes if any particular company in india is particularly focus focus on self reliance of these defense products so ministry of defense will provide 70% of the cost to that particular company on the prototype development that's how the government of india is focusing on that then make make two category the second category will be make two category okay so the first category we have talked about the defense procurement program the second is all about the fund, fundment of industry like the ppp model 
have you heard about the ppp model so there was a question by indian yeah what what is the sharing formula of private party and government so first let talk let's talk about ppp model have you heard about the ppp model please tell me once whether you have understood the previous slides and we have moved on the ppp model so ppp model is public private partnership right so in this model government what is ppp model so government and the private players or private companies comes together for a particular project okay so in our make to category <coughs> the self reliance will be funded by the industry and assured procurement the following platform has been listed so basically a particular product which is known as anti jamming system for multiple platforms so what is this anti jamming system for multiple prog uh, programs or platforms so have you been to an army area kya aap koi aap mein se army area gaya hai aur wahan par aapne dekha hoga कि आपके जो सिग्नल्स हैं द सिग्नल्स जो आपके चले जाते हैं जो मोबाइल के सिग्नल्स होते हैं ना वो चले जाते हैं राइट वाई बिकॉज देर आर सम जैमिंग सिस्टम विच इज डन बाय द आर्मी ताकि कोई बाहर का आदमी आके या फिर कोई सिविलियन आके यहां के सिस्टम को हैक ना कर ले और दे शुड नॉट मिस यूज द थिंग्स देयर राइट सो बेसिकली इन केस ऑफ वॉर से सपोज टू कंट्रीज और in war russia and ukraine okay so russia has developed a particular technology which is able to hack and jam the system of ukraine but if tell me once if ukraine is able to develop that technology which can anti jam this particular technology of russia so can uk has an upfront in war right again i am telling you this that say suppose russia has a particular technology to jam all the procurements all the signals of ukraine but ukraine has a particular product which which has an anti jamming technology and it can it can overcome this particular jamming product of the russia and they have an war upfront in case of war right so this is what anti jamming system for multiple platforms talks about right then third is about the special purpose vehicle special purpose vehicle is also of ppp model that specific companies will be made specific private companies will be made who will again with drdo private companies with drdo that is, that is defense research development organization will work for the defense sector for research and development of the defense products right so special purpose vehicles also works on the ppp model that special companies will be made who will with the help of collaboration with drdo that is defense research and development organization will work and research upon the new defense equipments can be which can be made in india right is it clear samajh mein aa gaya aapko yahan tak haan ji abhi let me ask you name any two companies name any two companies which is an indian company and they are particularly working for the defense sector name any two companies can you name any two companies which are specifically working for this uh, self reliance defense sector please tell me about two uh, at least two companies please tell me about two companies if you know at least try once so that <coughs> okay yes so one is hull yes that's right that is hindustan aeronautics limited right second is bdl that is bharat dynamics limited right bharat dynamics limited okay so hull is a company which is more into aerospace and bdl that is bharat dynamics limited is more into missile right so these are some companies who are specifically focusing on make in india in uh, defense products right 
then the spv these special purpose vehicles are specifically focused on which products first is all about long range unmanned uh, unmanned aerial vehicle that is also known as drone this particular uh, long range unarmed aerial vehicle is a technical name for for drone then second is high altitude long endurance and third is indian multi role helicopter okay multi role helicopter so this is what long range unarmed aerial vehicles look like right so this is what drone is then second is then second is a uh, high uh, altitude long endurance this is high altitude long endurance i have not changed this then third is indian multi role helicopters okay so this is what indian multi -hel uh, role helicopters look like so this is all about these three products which is spv on, on which spv is, is focusing upon then another thing that is idex so idex is a particular ecosystem which is more focusing upon the aerospace right and innovation and technology of defense sector okay and they are specifically focusing on the startups and msmes who are well versed and in the business of defense production and procurement okay so idx is a particular ecosystem which works about or which is in work in aerospace and defense technology and innovation industry and it specifically focus upon the startups and micro small and medium enterprises who are focusing on these defense products okay and specifically which product low orbit pseudo satellite so what is this low orbit pseudo satellites this is what low orbit pseudo satellites so it is basically what this satellite do it 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 tracks the whole <coughs> particular region of a country or of a area right so this is all about the ro low orbit pseudo satellites then what is the significance of this particular news or this particular self reliance the government targeting self reliance that it will develop the indian industry obviously it will develop the indian industry if the government is focusing on self reliance in domestic uh, domestic defense products so automatically the defense industries of or domestic industries which are more specifically working on defense products they will automatically developed then global footing obviously once the indian companies indian defense companies reach the bank benchmark so they will get start they will get start orders from other countries also as like russia today that india is more over dependent upon russia for imports of the arm products serving the needs of arm force obviously be it be indian army be it be navy be it be air force be it be bsf be it be any arm force if domestic industry is catering the issues or developing the product in india only so they will able to serve the needs of the arm force then greater efficiency obviously as we all know that it takes time to import many goods as import by importing goods you, you take or you consume lot of time by you have to do many formalities you have to do many documentation while doing import if you are doing domestic trade so that will take less time and it will ov obviously increase the efficiency then more employment okay obviously when domestic industries will grow the domestic market or do domestic people will get more and more employment so these are the significance of this particular news then we will talk about the challenges obviously as you all know that the first 5 year plan okay first 5 year plan focused upon the agriculture however the second 5 year plan focused upon the industrialization even today the government is focusing on industrialization over the agriculture okay so the first challenge will be that there is negligence in agriculture sector right because even today the most of the population i can say about the 50% of the population is dependent upon the agriculture sector for their livelihood however more focus on the industrial sector is going to neglect this particular thing right then impact on imports obviously the imports if government is focusing upon the self reliance and on the particular goods to be made in india it will automatically impact the imports then bureaucratic hassles 
obviously always there is an issue when whenever any country any foreign investor wants to invest in india so there are some uh, political issues or political instabilities which comes in that particular time period right then loopholes in laws and infrastructure obviously we don't have particular skilled labor or particular infrastructure for now that can be there for making the defense products easily and right and bad relationship with china as most of the raw material can be imported from the china and some of from russia but we don't have that good relations with china that can be a hurdle in making this particular thing right let's talk about future now so what what will be the steps that government can do in uh, future so that this particular things can be achieved first is there is need for dpsps that is defense public sector undertakings and ofb that is ordnance cable factories to identify their core strategic operations that what they are in good at okay so what can they do good so that this particular aim of the government can be achieved easily right so this particular uh, the aim of the government can be achieved easily right then there is a need for dpsps and ofbs to compete with the private sector obviously private sector by by private sector i means the other countries private sector right and further continuous technology upgrade will be required obviously because to match with the other countries technology like usa or i can say the developed countries we have to work upon the research and development of this defense sector without this you cannot achieve or you cannot go in par with the other developed countries because if you are not working on defense and technology or technology upgradation so while at the time of war you will not able to cope up or you will not able to match up with the technology which the developed country has having right now right so this was a news about the indigenous production of defense products i hope this news is clear to you so tell me whether this particular news is clear to you एक बार प्लीज बता दीजिए वेदर क्लियर है आपको मजगांव डॉक यस प्रांजल मजगांव डॉक इज आल्सो अ डिफेंस कंपनी शिपिंग डिफेंस कंपनी राइट सो एक बार प्लीज बता दीजिए एंड प्लीज लाइक द सेशन प्लीज आई हैव अ स्मॉल रिक्वेस्ट दैट प्लीज लाइक द सेशन एक बार प्लीज बता दीजिए वेदर यू हैव अंडरस्टूड ऑल द थिंग्स व्हिच आई हैव टोल्ड यू राइट नाउ ओके सो the second news is all about the looming oil crisis okay looming oil crisis that is about the crude and edible oil both so i will be talking in this particular topic that there is immense increase in the prices of crude oil worldwide crude oil worldwide and increase in edible oil the increase in the price of edible oil in india so what is the correlation between them let's talk about it so first this particular news was all about that with oil import from russia banned by the us okay so russia has been banned by us and been phased out by uk for oil imports yes pdf bilkul milegi aap you will be getting the pdf so basically the news is all about that us and some european countries european union countries have put a ban on russia or put a sanctions on russia not to import the crude oil and gas from the russia okay so let's talk about the global oil market first that how we why we are talking about this specific news so basically us is the largest share uh, us has the largest share of global output in case of oil or crude oil i can say then second is russia and third is saudi arabia okay so these three particular countries contributes about the 45% of the global oil market in the world right so these three countries contribute 45% of the global oil market in the world and if any of these countries get impacted or get sanctioned by any country so automatically the price will rise why the price will rise let's talk about it so basically if if say suppose us as a country or U, uk as a country or other european countries 
are importing from Russia, right? Are importing from Russia and other countries also. Say some ten percent they import from other countries, ten ten percent they import from other countries, then twenty percent from Russia. Say now. As they have put ban on Russia, they will not be able to import gases and oils from Russia. But the demand will be the same, right? Demand will be same, but now supply will be less. As Russia, they have put ban on Russia, so Russia will not be able to supply the particular oil to these countries. Now the demand will be same, but supply will be less. And as you all know, the law of demand and supply, whenever there is more demand and supply is less the prices of the product will go up right this is a simple logic whenever the demand of a product will go high and supply will uh, supply is less the pro, uh, the prices of that product will be high okay have you understood this so basically russia is the world second largest so by this we are able to understand that russia is the world second largest producer of oil as well as the second largest exporter of the oil so producer is a uh, russia is second largest producer also and russia is second largest exporter also okay and in addition to this let me tell you that russia is a second biggest and they are also the second cheapest and better quality oil they are also the exporter of second cheapest means if i talk about this again the russia or the countries which used to import oil from russia gets a cheaper oil from russia now they have to cater the de demand of their country now they have to import the same quantity at higher price obviously so automatically the the prices in their domestic market will also increase simple logic right so automatically the price in their particular domestic market will also get a increase right then <coughs> that that the, so this automatically explains that banning russia oil will lead to the higher prices and this will be a particular con concern so what will be the implication of this move higher inflation will be there okay so we have already discussed in our previous week current affairs that how you european union has been dependent upon russia for their gas needs right everyone remember that i have told you in my previous lecture or previous week's current affairs that how the european union countries are heavily dependent upon russia for their gas imports right so if they put ban on russia for this import automatically the price will go high i have told you the logic right then supply gulf obviously there will be a supply issue if russia is not exporting or they have banned uh, they have done ban on russia so supply gulf will be there russia has been holding back from providing additional supplies of nature natural gas to europe okay so as they have put ban on europe no sorry russia so russia has also backed off from supplying the gas okay so continued under investment in oil and gas exploration okay because they have put ban say suppose if russia russia is banned by n number of countries for exporting the oil okay so russia used to invest in their oil industry but now as russia is banned so with the, they will not invest in their oil invest, uh, industry because the demand from other countries will be less so it will have an impact on under investment or it will lead to an under investment in oil and gas exploration okay so there is very limited space capacity within the opec that is organization of petroleum exporting countries okay so if russia stops the exporting of oil so there will be a problem because we have limited space to reserve the oil okay and other dimension to this gap So just cost of production, quality of crude oil apart from obviously because I have told you that the quality which Russia used to provide is the second best quality of the oil. So all automatically it will result in the degradation of quality of oil. Then individual countries cost of production will also get high. Okay. Then other options. What uh, by banning Russia, what all options we have for crude oil, right? First is all about the emergency. so every country 
ओके एवरी कंट्री मेंटेन्स एमरजेंसी रिजर्व एमरजेंसी रिजर्व ऑफ ऑयल टू केटर एनी कॉन्टिजेंसी और क्राइसिस राइट एनी कॉन्टिजेंसी क्राइसिस को केटर करने के लिए हर एक कंट्री जो है वो अपने यहां ऑयल रिजर्व रखती है सो so बेसिकली बट ये एमरजेंसी पर्पज के लिए होता है दे आर नॉट फॉर अ स्पेसिफिक पर्पज की हाँ भाई आपने किसी कंट्री पे बैन लगा दिया नाउ यू कैन यूज इट राइट सो बेसिकली द स्ट्रेटेजिक रिजर्व आर गुड इनफ ओनली फॉर द एमरजेंसी ओके द टॉप थ्री कंट्रीज विच आर इन नंबर वन नंबर टू नंबर थ्री पोजिशन फॉर दीज रिजर्व आर यूएस चाइना एंड जापान राइट यूएस चाइना एंड जापान so supply from countries such as venezuela and iran also has an other option that venezuela has the world's largest oil reserve okay so it has the world largest oil reserve they have the world largest oil reserve they can store the they have the amount or they have the infrastructure to store the world largest oil reserve it doesn't mean that they have right now these three countries have the oil reserve highest oil reserve right now but the capacity the capacity country is venezuela we can store ample amount of oil reserves in venezuela but producing oil requires more than just reserve obviously aapko production zyada zaruri hai ki reserve banana zyada zaruri hai pehle mere ko batao producing the oil is important or just the reserve is important just tell me one thing khana banana important hota hai ki khana store karna zyada important hota hai what do you think Yeah, obviously. Yes. So obviously, the production of oil is more important than just maintaining the reserve. So it will not be regarded as an other option. Obviously, the country's oil producing apparatus is in despair, partly due to government government mismanagement. Obviously, that the Russian government and Ukraine government are in war, right? so obviously there is a mismanagement of oil reserves and every resource of the particular country these both countries then oil producing countries are also in debts and they do not have good quality drilling and equipment so basically we don't have other we are not able to understand or we are not able to cope up with with the situation because we do not have any other option it will automatically it will automatically boom the prices of oil if we have another option so we can cater the problem easily but now we can see that we have n number of problems and we cannot cater this problem easily even iran will not increase their output unless it gets nuclear deal with the us okay now in near future if i talk about the production that that can be scaled up but it will obviously take time money and resources okay and since individual production levels are quite low so many countries have to come together and they have to make some situation or some kind of thing which can cater the situation easily right okay so as we have already talked about that us is not that that dependent upon the russia for uh, these oil needs because they are they are also the 18 to 19% uh, hold they also hold the 18 to 19% global market share of oil but the european countries specifically the european union countries are heavily dependent upon the russia specifically if i talk about the germany okay germany is a biggest decision maker in the european union and they account for 12% of the global export of oil in germany it is much okay so germany is rely upon the 12% of their oil from russia okay and similarly similarly germany is also hugely dependent upon russia for natural gas also 25% of the natural gas comes of germany comes from russia only right then automatically it is also impacting the prices of the edible oils by edible oil i means the palm oil the mustard oil and the soya bean oil okay so these are the edible oils which are used by the indian households for their for their food needs right so prices of palm oil the most consumed edible oil in world have jumped up by 15% because in addition to crude oil 
रशिया एंड यूक्रेन और ऑल्सो द एक्सपोर्टर ऑफ एडिबल ऑयल एंड एज द डिमांड हैज बीन द डिमांड हैज बीन द सेम बट द सप्लाई हैज बीन हेम्पर ड्यू टू द वॉर ऑटोमेटिकली द प्राइस ऑफ दीज पाम ऑयल्स और दीज एडिबल ऑयल्स हैज बीन सर्च ओके इट हैज बीन सर्च फॉर अराउंड फिफ्टीन परसेंट फिफ्टीन परसेंट तक प्राइस जो है वो बढ़ गए so india what why this is particularly impacting india because india is the one of the biggest vegetable oil importer india imports about 60% of the edible oils okay and it imports palm oil from indonesia malaysia okay soil from russia argentina and sunflower oil mainly from russia and ukraine so if i talk about specifically sunflower so india is merely depend upon russia and ukraine and due to this particular war the prices of these sunflower has been increased immensely and that's why it is impacting the inflation of india yesterday we have received the data of consumer price index and it has been surged for more than 6% okay so basically if if the particular prices of oil and edible oil, crude oil and edible oil increases it automatically impacts the inflation because many things if crude oil is <coughs> if crude oil becomes more pricier so automatically the prices of raw material will increase and obviously crude oil uh, edible oil is consumed by most of the indians so automatically this will also impact the prices of this thing right have you understood okay so this is the reason this these are the reasons why basically the prices of these edible oils are increasing specifically sunflower so the country may eventually have to turn genetically modified wraps that is properly known as mustard oil so basically what what do you think as an government or as a bureaucrat what what all steps you will take to tackle the situation tell me what all steps you will take to tackle the situation what do you think what all steps you should take to control this increase in prices so basically you can take the steps of reduce the import duties on these edible oils so that the inflation can control okay that you can limit the inventories to prevent hoarding means many companies hold the inventory okay what the uh, what the companies do they hold the inventories and wait for surging the prices in the market and when there is surge in prices in the market so they just take out their inventory so that they can generate higher profits so you can just limit these things also second point is government selling through the public distribution system government can sell these edible oils to pds which can be below the market value obviously then duty rationalization scheme means any change in duty any increase in duty on these edible oil should be watched clearly and the rationale behind it should be given properly if there is any increase in duty of these edible oils that should be focused because it will automatically results into increase in the price of these edible oils right then <coughs> to build up reserves boosting the domestic production and allowing commercial cultivation obviously again the same things we have to focus on self reliance that's why government is focusing so much of self so much on self reliance because ultimately you don't know in mere future how the situation can be or the how the situation could be so you should develop each and every product which is a necessity or which is necessary to survive in india only or in our country only so that you cannot get dependent or you should not be dependent to other countries in case of this like ab aaj ka example dekh lijiye hame kitna problem ho raha hai because <coughs> sorry because of this war we are facing so much of issues right we are facing so much of issues and this situation can occur in futures also that's why india is specifically focus on being a self reliant country then also they have also focused upon the national mission on edible oil palm in which india is trying to do, uh, boost the domestic production to overcome this the problem
ओके इन विच दे हैव द गवर्नमेंट लॉन्च द वन पॉइंट फाइव बिलियन इनिशियटिव कॉल द नेशनल मिशन ऑन एडिबल ऑयल्स टू बूम द प्रोडक्शन ऑन दीज एडिबल ऑयल्स वॉट इज द वे फॉरवर्ड ऑब्वियसली इंडिया शुड बिल्ड एन एडिबल ऑयल रिजर्व टू टैकल दिस प्रॉब्लम ओके सो दैट प्राइस स्पाइक्स कैन बी टैकल्ड इजिली then this would be similar to what china does they have a particular stock piles on crude oils and edible oils so in case of less uh, so in case of high prices so they can use their reserves properly then india's food stock piles is focused upon grains and wheats they should also replicate the same in edible oils in the production of edible oils also so more land should be diverted to grow soya bean sunflower and rap oil okay rap crop means now the land is more into wheat and rice right so they should divert this land to grow this particular edible oil so that the dependence on these edible oils on other countries can be lowered down okay and the government will need to spend 50 billion rupees on these particular oil seeds and ph- farmer will need to shift away from the growing wheat and rice and they will move on they should move on to these edible oils so that this problem can be cater easily right so have you understood this news so basically we have talked about two news both was talking about the being uh, both was talking about being self reliant right both was talking about being self reliant first was in case of defense product second was in case of the edible oils now the third news is all about the fifth ministerial dialogue on trade and investment between india and china as we have already know that we have already studied or we have already talked about the bilateral trade agreement between india and uae india and uae in our first lecture in that lecture we have discussed that what are agreements which is done between the india and uae to boost the import and export of goods and services including the investment right in the same way we are going to discuss today about the trade and investment agreement between india and canada right so recently india and canada held the fifth ministerial dialogue on trade and investment in new delhi so let me tell you the background first so this particular talks about india canadian trade was happening during the prior to covid times but due to covid these talks were postponed and now this talks about the bilateral trade between india and canada has been resumed again right so the ministries underlined the significance of the mdti of institution mechanism for forging robust bilateral and investment policies which can increase the economic ties between india and canada right so which will automatically increase the economic ties between india and canada okay so india and canada bilateral ties underpin shared the demographic democracy pluralism expanding economic engagement regular high level interactions between those countries and people to people ties let's talk about each and everything in detail okay so we will discussing each and every point in detail right so <coughs> so as we all know that uh, prime minister of india visited many different countries he keeps on visiting many different countries due to this international relation or international trade purposes so basically he visited Ch- canada in 2015 for this particular bilateral trade agreement and this particular agreement was succeeded but as i told you that due to covid this uh, the talkings were postponed and now again this has been resumed right so bilateral trade in goods and amount uh, amounted to us 6.73 billion in 2019 20 this data is near to covid right then india exports that is usd 2.85 billion and india imports is around 3.88 billion so total will be around 6.73 billion so us uh, india ka export kitna hai to to canada it is 2.85 and india ka jo import kitna hai canada se 3.88 hai so basically in case of india canada bilateral trade india is the net importer of the thing right so india is what india is a net importer of the trade okay and if i talk about the services this was the data of goods and if i talk about the services the bilateral trade in services in 2019 was around 3.10 billion okay so what are the major 
items which India export to Canada that is gems, jewelry, precious stones, pharmaceutical products specifically during the COVID we will talk about during the COVID how Indian pharma industry has helped the Canadian industry then ready made garments, mechanical appliances, okay, organic chemicals, light engineering goods, iron and steel articles right then what India imports that is pulses, roots, tubbers, newsprints, wood pulp and asbestos, potash, okay, iron scrap, copper mineral industry chemicals okay so potash is a product of potassium okay and abstor is a particular product which can cater which can cater heat and chemical issues okay so any chemical issues and heat issues can be absorbed by asbestos okay so this is a particular product for this so if i talk about the nuclear cooperation let's talk about each and every aspect of the relation of india and canadian trade so basically if i talk about the nuclear cooperation the, a nuclear cooperation agreement that is nca with canada was signed in june 2010 <coughs> and it came into force in 2013 and this particular appropriate agreement for nca that is nuclear cooperation agreement was signed in finally march 2013 under a joint committee civil nuclear cooperation was constituted so basically india and canada india and canada signed a agreement to tackle the nuclear needs between them okay then if i talk about science and technology indo canadian science and technology cooperation has been primarily focused upon the promoting industrial research and development so if i talk about science and tech the mayor and the most important thing is research and development research and development in which you research and develop a particular prototype or product and work on that if that research and development is successful then you will automatically shift to that prototype and work on that particular project right and it takes so much of time and so much of technology which indo uh, indo canadia indo canadian makes it through right so indo canadian science and technology cooperation has been primarily focused on promoting industrial research and development which has potential for application through development of new ip processes prototypes or products okay so ip i have already talked talked about intellectual property if any particular country produce a particular goods which is not available in other countries so they they have intellectual property rights so that no country can copy their products okay canada was also a partner in technology summit of 2000 70 then if i talk about department of biotechnology under ic impacts what is ic impact so this is a program of india Ch india canada in which they do research and development on biotechnology to promote to promote research and development in this particular area okay so they have just implement joint research projects on this biotechnology and to protect the agri agriculture biotech and waste management they have also they have also worked on the earth science and polar canadian have started program for exchange of knowledge and scientific research obviously any research which has been done by indians and has been done by canadians can be easily here between them so that anyone can use the research of different countries right is it clear to you then if i talk about space india and canada have been pursuing successful cooperative and commercial relationship and isro and canadian space agencies have worked a lot and launched many satellites for their immense bilateral relationships then if i talk about entrix one more addition in uh, space program entrix which is a commercial aim of uh, arm of isro right and isro has also launched their 100 satellite that is pslv what is pslv polar satellite launch vehicle right and also flew the canadian first leo satellite leo satellite i have already talked to you about in the defense program so they have that's how they are working together and ensuring that they are doing very good is it clear uh, india i am i am going to talk about the indian immig immigrants in further slides don't worry about it okay 
डोंट वरी अबाउट इट आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट इट देन वॉट अबाउट एजुकेशन ऑब्वियसली इंडिया एंड कैनेडा हैज साइंड सो मच ऑफ एम ओ यूज फॉर एजुकेशन ओके एम ओ यूज वट इज एम ओ यूज मिनिस्ट मेमोरेंडम ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग ओके इवन यू मे नॉट नो दैट मैनी प्रोफेशनल डिग्रीज विच आर परस्यूड इन इंडिया कैन कैन हैव दैट कैनेडियन डिग्री ऑल्सो बाई गिविंग टू और थ्री एग्जाम्स इन कैनेडा से सपोज इफ अ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट वॉन्ट्स टू डू इफ अ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट ऑफ इंडिया इफ अ इंडियन सी ए वॉन्ट्स टू परस्यू कैनेडियन सी ए सो ही कैन परस्यू कैनेडियन सी ए बाई ओनली गिविंग टू और थ्री एग्जाम्स सो दीज आर द टाइप्स ऑफ एम ए यूज विच हैज इन साइन टू प्रमोट द एजुकेशन इंडस्ट्री ऑफ बिटवीन दीज कंट्रीज राइट ऑल्सो द एम ओ यूज ऑन हायर एजुकेशन हैज बीन साइन बिटवीन दीज टू कंट्रीज <laughs> then security and defense what if i talk about the security and defense so india and canada has collaborated closely in international fora particularly through un that is united nation commonwealth and g20 countries okay and there is robust cooperation on counter terrorism issues and they are working immensely to tackle the terrorism issues and they are overcoming that right so they have also formed a framework of joint working group so that they can tackle terrorism easily then people to people the same question which indian was asking indian what was your question what effect it would have on indian immigrants so basically it will what what effects that will have in indian immigrants so basically as you all know that many migrants from india many migrants from india goes to canada if you talk about the canadian host one of the largest indian dis- diasporas in the world numbering 1.6 million look at the number 1.6 million of pios that is person of indian origins and nris which account for more than 4% of the total population right and even in house of commons that is parliament of canada the total strength is 338 and 22 members of house on commons is of indian origin in canada 22 members out of 338 members are of person of indian origins so that's how you can see that how this particular bilateral relations between india and canada has been evolved okay even in case of cultural exchange canada was a country of focus on the 48th international film festival of india held in goa and there also an indian canadian co production agreement in films right if any indian movies wants to get shooted in canada so they can have or any canadian movie wants to get shooted in india they can easily shoot the same okay and diwali celebration the diwali celebration used to take place in canada also in a proper way right then what was the cooperation in covid 19 pandemic obviously special charter flights were operated by the canadian high commission and facilitated by indian to evacuate strained canadian nationals from india like from india many indian people was was evacuated from canada during covid and vice versa situation many many canadians were evacuated from india during the covid times also there was supply of medicines okay supply of medicines and uh, specifically paracetamol and hydrochloroquine tablet during the covid times and that's how they have increased their relationships okay so they have signed a particular comprehensive economic partnership agreement to increase this particular trade bit, trade of goods and services and investment okay and they have already restarted talks for comprehensive this particular comprehensive agreement as i have already told you that during covid this particular talks was slowed down due to covid pandemic now the talks has been again initiated and both countries have decided to restart the talks okay so sepa talks with canada has derailed amid the covid pandemic but were expected to restart after the canadian election obviously this will start <coughs> this was going to start after the election which held in september 2021 and bilateral goods the trade between two countries i have already talked to you, talk to you about that it is around 6.3 billion usd dollars okay and they want to increase this particular trade by doing this or by giving effect to this particular comprehensive economic partnership agreement right so before entering into comprehensive partnership agreement they want to sign a early protection trade agreement so that this is a particular draft agreement which will lead to the finalization of sepa agreement okay so both nice agreed to consider an interim agreement that is early progress trade agreement that could be concluded early as a transitional step towards the sepa so before sepa 
बिफोर फाइनलाइजेशन द सेपा दे वॉन्ट्स टू ड्राफ्ट अ पर्टिकुलर एग्रीमेंट टू फाइनलाइज द सेपा दिस पर्टिकुलर ड्राफ्टेड एग्रीमेंट इज नोन एज अर्ली प्रोग्राम ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट ओके दिस इज नोन एज अर्ली प्रोग्राम ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट इन विच इट विल इंक्लूड हाई लेवल कमिटीज कमिटमेंट इन गुड सर्विसेज रूल्स ऑफ ओरिजन सैनिटरी एंड फाइसो सैनिटरी मेजर्स टेक्निकल बैरियर्स टू ट्रेड एंड डिस्प्यूट इफ एनी डिस्प्यूट टेक प्लेस हाउ द डिस्प्यूट इज गोइंग टू बी रिजॉल्व हाउ द ट्रेड ऑफ गुड्स विल बी इंक्रीजेस हाउ दिस थिंग्स विल बी इंक्रीजेस अकॉर्डिंग राइट सो आई होप दैट यू हैव अंडरस्टूड दिस पर्टिकुलर न्यूज सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर टूडेज सेशन आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड ऑल द एस्पेक्ट ऑफ टूडेज न्यू टूडेज करंट अफेयर्स राइट so to do, tomorrow pralas sir will be you he will be taking the geography environment and science at current affairs so thank you so much i hope you have already understood all the things right indian have you understood what what effect it would have on indian immigrants obviously if anyone is going from india to canada or canadian is coming from canada to india they will have multiple immense effects or multiple synergies by doing this right so thank you so much have you understood the lecture just tell me once if you have any doubts so you can tell me have you understood please tell me and please just hit the like button if you like the lecture okay so thank you so much for today's session and we'll see you in next week Thank you.